And now for the winner of the World Telegram Radio Editor Show, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Got a little quick there. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And am I happy. No, we will be to Miami, Florida, and I won't be in New York this week. <laughs> and I just got back from my hometown where I celebrated my birthday. We had a grand party, and you should have seen the presents I gave my relatives for my birthday. Oh, they were just beautiful. Oh, really, I see, Jack. Oh, I'm going to that. You know, a man is as old as he looks. So you're 55, huh? I get it. <laughs> well, Frank, I'm nowhere near that. I may mean, look that old to you, but it's because I don't look right, that's all. What do you mean you don't look right? Well, I go to bed at 9 o'clock on weekdays, and I don't drink or smoke or go to nightclubs. I don't see bad company. Oh, what's wrong with that? Yeah, well, you don't call that living right, do you? <laughs> Say, uh, say, Jack, you know my grandfather took care of himself just like you're doing, and, and he lived to be 103. What for? I don't know, buddy. I don't know. I don't know, but the poor fellow's gone now. Oh, that's too bad. Frankly. How did it happen? Well, when he was 98, he started running around, and it just got him. That's all. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, some of those kids just won't look at you. I know how it is. I brought up two grandfathers myself, and I just couldn't keep them out of a copy card. And I couldn't take the high de ho out of him, you know. I see, Jack. But how about going ahead with the program and stop all this reminiscence? Oh, all right, yeah. Say, Aloy, did you hear any of the other programs tonight? Yes, Jack, every one of them. I mean, were they anything like ours? I mean, did they say or do anything that we're going to do? Not a thing, Jack. Well, that's fine. Then I have nothing to worry about. You know, after all, we're on very late. We have to be careful not to repeat jokes. Anyway, here's a brand new story I have for you folks tonight. A man got on a bus the other day. Wait a minute. And after riding. Wait a minute. Eddie Grant is all that tonight. Wait a minute. You mean the one about the man getting on the bus? Yes. Hmm. Well, I don't need that one anyway. <laughs> uh, here's another little story I picked up in Chicago the other day. An Irishman, a Scotsman, and an Italian were sitting hey. in a tap room. Hey, wait a minute. Is that the story where the Italian and the Irishman discover they have no money? And yes. Yes, that's it. <laughs> but heaven said Joe Penner told that on his program. I see. Well, Lloyd, I'm glad we're not conflicting with anyone. I mean, it's good, huh? Anyway, here's a joke that I know is new. I mean, you can't fool me under nothing. A man who started asked the boy where the post office was. And the boy said, uh, uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, so that's a new story, huh? Well, Freddie Allen told it last week. The same joke? Yes, in the same post office. Hmm. Well, too bad our program doesn't go on at 6 a.m. Well, here's a joke I know that hasn't been used. I wrote it myself. Now, listen. There was a cross-eyed judge examining three fellows, see? And the cross I Hello, everybody. Hello, Jack. When did you get back from Chicago? Yesterday. Why? Oh, uh, okay. no. I, I mean, uh, did you have a nice trip? Yeah, now listen, Parker. There was a cross I judge. There always was. <laughs> oh, yeah? And what program did you hear that? Team Cut. Oh. Hello, everybody. Hi, Miss Frankie. Hello, you. Oh, right. And what's this? Who are you? Mary Livingston sent me over to take her place. Oh, Mary Livingston sent you over. Well, this is a surprise. I mean, what do you do? I'm fine. What do you do? I didn't say not. I didn't say how do you do. I said what do you do? Well, I sing, dance, wash dishes, mind babies, and I imitate God. A versatile little girl. Are you one of the Miss Livingston? No, but my father is. Oh, your father. What is he, an uncle or a cousin? Janitor. A janitor. Yes. And have you got to go down at our house? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. Really, we can't... I know, Miss Father, we can't use you. But Miss Livingston paid me already. She gave me a half a dollar to take her place. Well, send her back a quarter and go home, yes? Not them doings. I've got paid for this and I'm going to stay. Now, listen, young lady, I don't like your looks and I don't want anyone to take Mary's place. Now, go away and don't bother me. I have dinner with you. What time? Oh, yeah, I've had enough of you. Listen, if you had a brain, you'd be a half-wit. <laughs> I heard that on Burns and Allen's program. Give me that club, will you? Come yeah. here, you. Yeah, Frank, don't let me... Hey, my dancing lady from Dancing Lady. Well, the fan mail certainly piles up. Just think, folks, I've been away only a few days, and here are several thousand letters. Hey, well, let's see how we're doing. After all, you can't go by the applause in the studio, you know. Here's a lady, uh, a letter, rather, from a lady in Sioux City, Iowa. It says, uh, Dear you with the no draft ventilation. I heard your program last Sunday in which you gave us little women, and I liked it very much. 
Please send me an autographed picture of Amos and Andy. <laughs> ah, folks, it's letters like, letters like this that make you want to carry on, believe me. Ah, here's a letter from a gentleman in Erie, Pennsylvania. It says, Mr. Jack Denny, dear sir, I have been listening to you for a long time. Now you listen to me. <laughs> that play you gave us last week, so and so, so and so, so. You're still Leonard Pencil. <laughs> the big punk, what does he know about radio anyway? Hey, Frank. Ah, here's a letter from Miami, Florida. It says, Dear Mr. Benny, see if you can use this. In the land of golden sunshine down in Florida, it is then that we all know winter's here no more. Dear old winter, dear old... Wait a minute, who's this from? Oh, Mary Livingston, I see. Well, I'll read one more. Here's a letter from Mr. Clifford Gordon of Chicago. It says, Dear Mr. Benny, although you do good plays and act them well, I'm afraid you're overlooking a great angle when you ignore mystery. Everybody loves a mystery, the suspense, the thrill, the continual chase. All right, Mr. Gordon, we get it. Anticipating your letter, we fortunately have been rehearsing a mystery play all week. And we will put it on tonight for your pleasure. It is called The Green Room Murder by S.S. Van E. <laughs> and here is the mystery. A man was murdered on the Ruby La 8th Avenue and 45th Street <laughs> near the Mullen Rouge Laundry. Now, who was this man? Where did he come from? Why was he murdered? And who done it? Jack, Jack, you know your English is very bad. Well, so is this play. <laughs> I will play the part of the mastermind, the great detective. Okay. Yes, I will. Let's be appetizing. Mm -hmm. And now, while we are setting the stage, Frank Parker, our mysterious tenor, will sing "You're in My Heart." Are you ready, Parker? Yes, sir. And sing. <laughs> That was, uh, that was Frank Parker singing for the first time over the air, a number of titles, You're in My Heart. And now for our mystery, The Green Room Murder. Murder. M-O-I-D-E-R. is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Wu, and the road is San Juan Club, on 8th Avenue and 45th Street. Curtain, music friends. Nobody leaves this room. A man has been murdered. Oh. Oh. You can't hold it without going. Well, this is an outrage. I couldn't do it. I gotta go. I can't be interfered in this. Nobody leaves this room. I'll call headquarters. Oh. Operator. Operator. Get me police headquarters right away. Hello? Hello? Yes, it's police headquarters. Detective O'Benny, the mastermind speaking. Yes, O'Benny, the William Powell of the air. What's that? Never mind how long I've been a detective. What do you want? What? A murder in your home? What time does it happen? 8.15? Then you're inviting me now when it's all over, eh? Could have given me a week's notice. Okay, I'll be right there. What is it, Steve? Murder at 9.34, Ruby La 8th Avenue. Well, right, let's get going. Wait a minute, Sarge. All in all five. All in all five. Murder on the Rue de la 8th Avenue. Calling all cars. And when you're calling for cars, ask for the Chevrolet. The most dependable car in the low price pool. Calling the whole thing off. Calling the whole thing off. Come, Sergeant Hedrilla. We're going to a murder. What do you think I ought to wear? If it can get on, it's not a formal affair. You know. Let's get going. Get in, Sarge. Let's go. Come on, Sarge, step on it. I'm going easy now. I need to step on my cigar butt. I just dropped it. 
Well, uh, here comes the traffic car. Hey, you two mugs. Pull over your car. You know you fellows that go at 80 miles an hour? Well, everybody knows that's easy for the 1934 Chevrolet. Right, Sarge. I've got a good mind to give you the ticket. You know, there's two of us. We'd like to see the big fellow follow. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who are you, anyway? Detective Old Bunny, the mastermind. And you? Well, I think it's the new action wheel. Oh, yeah? Well, look you over, boy. I'm Napoleon. I heard that on Baron Munchausen's program. Well, so Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Wait the fuck! I heard on Will Rogers' program! Step on it, Hat Willow! Hey, Sarge! How far is this going anyway? Where the hole's get to? Well, let's turn on the radio. Hey, Frank! Now, some of us are now mystery. It must be in Spain somewhere. And now, on with our mystery. The Green Room Murder. I think this is the place, Sarge. Oh, thank you. That's the house, 934. But this is 10th Avenue. What's the difference? We have no time to lose. Let's get going. Is this the house where the murder was committed? Yes. Are you detectives? Are we detectives? Are we detectives? We got our hats on, haven't we? We're from headquarters. What happened here tonight? A man was shot in the green room. Where's the green room? What? Any other place? No, just in the green room. Oh, just in the green room. Where is it? One side up. Don't go in the blue room. They're having a party in there. You know who fired the gun? No, but the boss fired the cook, and I expect to be fired in the morning. Now we're getting someplace. Make a note of that, Sarge. Okay, Chief. Come on, young lady. We'll need you. Let's go upstairs. Wait a minute. I guess this is it. Open that door. Open that door, I say. Oh, you won't do it, eh? Well, I will break it in. Come on, Sarge. Give up the work. Oh, pardon. Why didn't you tell us that was the bathroom? You're the mastermind, not me. Now, our first game, eh? Now, where is it? It's that room over there. Come on, Sarge, and don't lose sight of the maid. Now, wait a minute, everybody. Nobody leaves this room. Yeah, who are you? Detective O'Benny, the mastermind. Sarge, you watch the door and see that nobody leaves. Okay, Chief. And guard that raffle. Oh, you don't want to get away either. Quiet. <laughs> did anybody know the dead man? I did. He was a friend of mine. Yeah, who are you? And this is my apartment. He was playing good here tonight. Now, how many of you were playing? Well, there were nine of us. You see, these were all sitting at the table. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nine playing bridge. You sure it wasn't baseball? No, we had no umpire. Oh, you had no umpire, eh? Well, how could nine of you be playing bridge at one table? Six of us were dummies. Now we're getting something. Take it over there, Sarge. Okay, Chief. Where were you when the shot was fired? Sitting right here, with a gun in my hand. Oh, well, I know you didn't do it. Did you have anything else in your hand besides the gun? No. All right, you're dismissed. Let him go, Sarge. Okay, Chief. Now, you, yeah, Miss, what do you know about this murder? Well, I did one thing. Yes, yes, go on, go on. Then we're getting around and round and round and round yeah, and round. Yeah. And the murdered man got to be a first, no problem. I see, I see. And then what happened? Well, uh, everything was fine until he let his sister. Yeah. And then he was killed. Oh, uh, somebody, somebody killed him just because he was lucky and had five aces, eh? 
Did you know the dead man? Yes, he was the best friend I had in the whole world. Oh, see, look. There's a nurse in the dead man's back. Oh, oh. Never mind the petty things. I want to know who shot her. Give me back that knife. It's mine. Here you are, miss. Sorry we detained you. Let her go, Sarge. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Be careful how you leave that knife laying around, Mitch. You might lose it. I'll go feather your neck. Make a note of that, Sarge. Feather your neck. Oh, thank you. Now you, you in that full dress suit. What's your name? Frank Black. Frank Black, eh? What do you do for a living? I'm an officer leader. Oh, you do nothing, eh? <laughs> I get it. Now listen, did you know the DC? Certainly, we roomed together. He was the best car I ever had. Boy, was he popular. <laughs> what time did you get here tonight? Uh, it was 8.15. Yeah, how do you know it was 8.15? Well, I heard Eddie Tanner kidding Ruben up. Now we're getting someplace. What is Rubenoff doing? He was playing Mendelssohn's wedding march. Oh, yeah? Sarge, get Mendelssohn on the phone. Okay, Steve. Hello. Hello, Mendel. I want to speak to your son. Hello. Is this Mendelssohn? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you did? Okay, goodbye. What do you say, Sarge? He says he heard that on Phil Baker's program. Now we're getting some place. Who is that is? Put me a knock on the door. That's, that's it. I'm sorry. Oh, lady. Bunch of old Benny. Telegram, give it to me. Hmm, Miami, Florida. Ask Mendelssohn if he knows the one about the ghost. Sign Mary Livingston. Any answer, sir? No. Hey, the telegram is correct. 76 cents. Let him out, Sarge. Okay, Chief. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Now you, Frank Black. Hmm? What do you want? Say, Chief, look. There's a rope around the dead man's neck. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Hey, Black, you know anything about this rope? Sure, no, it's mine. Give it to me. I want to tie up some music. Give him the rope, Todd. <laughs> All right, you can go, Black. I'm sorry this murder happened inside of your rope. Thanks. <clears throat> we'll solve this mystery yet. Now I want to speak to the maid again. Yes, sir. Now listen here, young lady. I want to ask you a few questions. Where were you? Now listen here, young lady. I want to ask you a few questions. Where were you when the shots were fired? I was in the kitchen making up the bed. What? I was in the bed making up the kitchen. You don't want me to be the one Sure, these two girls, you are friends of mine. What two girls? The mess and the cook. Just open. Yes. Now make it over that side. Okay, Chief. So you girls were in Kilgore with together, were you? Yes. Well, what did you do? Did you ever say what you mean? What? Well, we did. Oh, but sir! So that's what killed them. Lock them up, Sarge. Okay, Chief. Play, Frank. Come to you with the compliments of the Chevrolet Motor Company, 